In order to respond as per the law, you have to do three things, okay? Three big tasks. The first one is you have to incorporate a tenants association, okay? That tenants association has to represent greater than 50% of the qualifying units, all right? And there are slight rules for the qualifying units, but the primary thing you have to remember is it's one unit, one vote, uh, and the head of household is pretty much the person who pays the rent or has their name on the lease. And there's exceptions and other rules, but we don't need to get into that now, okay? But the primary thing is it's, that tenants association has to represent greater than 50% of the units in the building, okay? You have to incorporate that tenants association. That means you're going to have to file some articles of, of incorporation. I'll do that for you. Uh, housing Counseling Services can certainly help you do that. That's Natalie and both Housing Counseling Services. Groups can help you get articles of incorporation. Simple document, okay? We'll get them notarized, 70 bucks, and that's done. That's, so that's task one. Task two is you have to send a letter of interest to your landlord. That's basically a form letter that says, you know what, we got your, we got your notice of offer of sale. Uh, we're not saying what we're buying, for sure, but we're saying we want to investigate and see what this process looks like. So, i.e., hold your horses. And the third thing that you have to do is you have to submit pretty much all of that same paperwork to the Office of Condo Conversion and Sale. You have to, in effect, notify the mayor through his agents in this other office that you're interested in participating in the process. Now, that means that you incorporate it. That's the first thing you have to do. You put the mayor on notice through his office that you want to participate, and you've told your landlord that you want to participate, too. That's what you have to do in between A and B. And the reason it breaks up into two halves is if you have an existing TA, which remember is my shorthand for tenants association, if you have an existing tenants association, then you have 30 days. If you don't have an existing tenants association, or as I always recommend, you want to form a brand new one. I always like brand new ones because I know they don't owe taxes, and I know that um, all of their paperwork is in order because they're brand new. You get an extra 45, you get 45 days. And I think the extra 15 days is worth, sometimes it's worth <coughs> 70 bucks. Um, it depends on where you guys are. Um, sometimes people will have an, an existing tenants association that they really love, but that's a separate issue. So, in between A and B, in those 45 days, we've incorporated, you've turned in your letter of interest, and you have notified the mayor through a registration packet. All of those <coughs> things, ULS or Housing Counseling Services can certainly help you do, all right? Now you're at B. On the top, where it says bona fide third party offer 135 days, that's saying if there is a third party, if there is a contract to purchase your building, you have 135 days to complete the next task. If, if there is no bona fide third party offer, if there, if there is no contract on, on the building, you have 120 days to complete the next task. And the next task that you have to complete is you have to <coughs> Sign a contract for the purchase of the building if you want to continue, and you have to put down a deposit, all right? The deposit could be no more than 5%. And actually, the deposit is some of the easiest money that you, that you can get a hold of in this process. The reason is because this deposit is not like a regular deposit. If you make the deposit and sign the contract and cannot be through with the rest of the purchase of the building, Reverse it. If you buy something at the store, put a deposit down on it, and you can't finish the purchase, what happens? If they, so you lose your deposit, right? Yeah. Right. This does not work that way. If you put the deposit down, and you make a good faith effort, but cannot follow through, that deposit is returned, all right, via the law. What that means is that lenders are pretty easy about their lending criteria, because their money is not really at risk. They're going to lend it to you, and if you buy the building, great, you're going to get a mortgage you're paying back. If you borrow the money and don't buy the, the building, they get the money back. So all they're risking is the interest that they're charging you, which is not that much. And it's money that you can come up with with due, all right? The hidden cost in here that you guys do have to keep in mind is at this point, you're going to have to hire an attorney. And that's going to mean coming up with some money internally. Now, I recommend dues. Many of, the, uh, many of the housing attorneys who do this kind of work um, will put their fees off until acquisition, which means that you'll get a monthly statement that says you owe some ungodly money. But when you get your mortgage to help pay for the building and pay for the other development costs, your lawyer will wait and put the fee 
off a year, a year and a half, until you have the money to pay. Okay? So that is, but the other, no, no, no. Okay. The other thing too is there are lending programs. How many Catholic services has one? The city also operates one. There are other small pools of money which nonprofits have, which is basically a tenant association that is collecting their dues, doing the best they can. They'll kick something in and help you get your retainer, help, um, help you get started. I haven't seen groups that are putting forth the effort where people are collecting you know, 20 or 30 dollars per month, per unit, that haven't been able to get uh, legal assistance. Sometimes the lawyers are a little bit busy, so it takes a while for them to get to you. It isn't a matter of money. Um, and that's who's going to negotiate your contract and help you get through it. The final stage is coming to acquisition. And that's simply a, 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 a that's And you have about 240 days to do that. I don't want to walk through that process. You have about 240 days to come to acquisition. You're going to get a final loan on, final loan on the building. And pretty much what they're going to do when they calculate out the final loan is they're going to add up all of the rent that comes into the building. Right? And they're going to put to, and you're going to get a developer who's going to help you put together a put together a development plan. Do you want to operate the building as a condo, a co-op, or do you want to keep it as some variety of rental? They're going to look at what's the proposed income, what are the expenses, how much loan can this